is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the uh, GSMC Weird News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Emily Ferrier, here to bring you through my favorite weird news stories of the past few days. Starting us off this week, parents allow their 11-year-old to drive a car because they were sick of him playing GTA all day. Uh, what? Parents have long fought a losing battle to stop their kids from playing video games for too long. But uh, sometimes, the carrot is more effective than the stick. It appears a set of parents in the UK subscribed to that thinking, allowing their 11-year-old boy, nonetheless, to drive their car. A way of stopping him from playing GTA all day, apparently. Police in the Lancaster town of Blackpool, stopped a red Vauxhall Astra in a car park at the town center, discovering the miner behind the wheel. The driver of the car was 11 years old. Yeah, 11, tweeted Lancaster Road Police. A family member was fed up with the child playing Grand Theft Auto all day on the PlayStation, so brought him to practice. I brought him out to practice uh, driving the car in Blackpool. The adult has been reported for traffic offenses. A recent survey showed that while 86% of parents say that their kids play games to an excessive amount, three-quarters believe that gaming has a positive impact on their children. Shocking. The other questionable part of this situation is that uh, GTA um, has a PEGI rating of 18+. plus. So it's not really the most suitable game for an 11-year-old in general. But, mo- but studies have shown that most parents don't actually pay attention to the title's age ratings. As anyone who's played the multiplayer element of uh, COD or GTA can ap- attest to. Uh, in the UK, it's possible to apply per- per- a provisional driver's license when you're 15 years old and 9 months, with the legal driving being... Uh, driving age being 17. There are some exceptions where a driver can be 16, and those under 17 can learn to drive with the qualified instructors uh, on a, on private land. Uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to those age restrictions, I've noticed. It's pretty easy not to pay attention to them, uh, I suppose. You just think, uh, yeah, it'd be fine, right? It'd be okay. It's not... I'm letting your kids do that. It's ridiculous. So I wanted to give you guys some fun facts and trivia about video games. Um, Mortal Kombat is the most successful fighting game of all time. You probably knew that anyway. But did you know, okay, that it was uh, developed in ten months by a team of four people? And uh, for the first six months, the game didn't even have a name. A year after its debut in arcades, Mortal Kombat was released on Mortal Monday, September 13th, 1993, to the Nintendo's Super NES and Game Boy, and the Sega Enterprise's Sega Genesis and Game Gear. The Nintendo versions completely omitted the blood that the game was known for. Guys, bear with me with this, because these facts are kind of shocking to me, because I don't know anything about video games, so if you do, you know, let me have my fun. Uh, The classic coin-op Space Invaders was originally developed so that uh, all the enemies 
moved at the same speed. However, as players destroyed the alien invaders, the computer had uh, fewer objects to draw, so it could render the objects faster. The result, as you destroy critters, the remaining ones march towards Earth faster. Whoa, that is scary stuff. Player reaction to the simulated disease in World of Warcraft so closely resembled historical records about real plagues that epidemiologists are currently using the data from World of Warcraft to evaluate how people would respond to a potential virus outbreak. Hintity, hintity. Not going to mention what that could be. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, programmer. Uh, Ye- Yejui Naka started with a simple concept. Players that... Uh, that would control a character inside a ball that rolled through levels and long tubes. Eventually, the character evolved to be a rabbit, and like Mario, he could stop and pick things up. However, when it was determined his rabbit ears would be too difficult to animate, they stopped to pick up, uh, and stopping to pick up items would slow the pace of the game. Developers looked at animals that would roll like balls to retain the style of the game, and fast action that they were going for. A hedgehog was proposed by uh, proposed by designer Nato Oshima was eventually chosen over an armadillo uh, who was a, an initially called Mr. Needle Mouse. So uh, that's where Sonic comes from. Remember the PlayStation 2 startup screen? Well, the seemingly random blocks and towers represented the game progress. The more you play, the more you save your games, the more blocks and towers appear. The towers represent the game, and the longer you play, the taller they get. The blocks represent the saved data. PlayStation 2 remains the best-selling video game console of all time, having sold 155 million units to the date. You should also know that the design of the PS2 was modeled after Atari Falcon Microbox. Sony bought the rights when Atari went bankrupt. Um, you might have already known that the Super Mario Bros. was the first video game to be made into a movie, but did you know that the up-and-coming actor Tom Hanks campaigned for the role of Mario? Uh, yeah, at the time Nintendo execs worried that he wouldn't have enough box office clout to carry the film. How ironic. Uh, Nintendo has continually involved the video game space and revolutionized its history, Nintendo Entertainment System, was the first video game controller to feature a directional pad. Super Nintendo Entertainment System was uh, the first controller to feature right and left shoulder buttons, and Nintendo 64 popularized the analog thumbstick. The company developed the Wii Motion technology and offered it to Microsoft and Sony first, who both turned it down due to its technology. Uh, And Nintendo ultimately introduced the motion controller to the masses. Video games have evolved to offer players almost any type of experience. Currently, there are only over 30 different types of video games, including programming, like Coden Game, where players must use programming languages like Java and C++ to advance through the levels. Such titles with an educational spin uh, make it, for some, top video games for children. Uh, Do you have a copy of Tetris for uh, Nintendo Entertainment System? If no... If, if you do, you might want to dig it out and check out what version you have, because the Tension copy, uh, Tension being Atari's published arm, is thought to be in limited quality with only 100,000 copies still in existence. Uh, you can read about the circumstances online, but in short, the Tension version preceded Nintendo's own version of Tetris, uh, pulled off the shelves. If you have the Sega version, you may be holding on to one of ten copies sent to be in existence. Uh, Check's Quest which was based on the Doom game engine, is a non-violent first-person shooter released in 1996 as a Chex serial promotion. It's the first video game ever included as a cereal box prize, the very first video game and video game character ever to get its own cereal, Donkey Kong. Uh, Captain Crunch-like cereal was barrels of fun for breakfast, and uh, it was shaped like tiny barrels. I'm going to continue this when we return from the break.
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back. We are talking video game facts, and because they're so fun, I'm going to continue with them. Uh, So we left off with the serial video games, and now, uh, uh, so often the case in video games, last-minute additions can define a legacy. For GoldenEye 007, for N64, the, uh, the team, without approval of the developers, Rare Studio directors, created the multiplayer component in the last few weeks of development. Massively popular feature was literally an afterthought. The game went on to help define and establish first-person shooter games and consoles, signaling from a transition from a Doom-like game to a more realistic one. Playing action video games uh, train, train people to make the right decisions. How? Players develop a heightened sense in their surroundings, and it helps them multitask. Surgeons that regularly play video games make 37% fewer errors and perform their tasks 27% faster than their peers. So, you know, get, get gaming. If you're a fan of Super Smash Bros., then uh, did you ever wonder about the inclusion of the solid snake in Super Smash Bros.? For all being a little random, Yoshi, Pikachu, Kirby, solid snake. Apparently, such thinking was warranted. The character addition stemmed from a close friendship between Haidu and Kun- Kujoma, uh, director of Metal Gear Solid, and Masahiro Shikuri, who of course created uh, Smash. Kojima practically begged Shikuri to include the Solid Snake, given Kojima's uh, son's fandom. Uh, Considered one of the greatest games of all time, Diablo is an action role-playing hack and slash classic known for its groundbreaking online play. Using Battle.net.com, an online service, players join forces all over the internet to play Diablo. Modern MMOs like World of Warcraft are direct descendants of Diablo, and 20 years after its debut, you can still play Diablo online. Uh, It's the longest supported online game ever. NFL, Madden MFL as a franchise is older than half the players currently playing in the NFL. It's the game in your system of choice. Uh, Madden NFL has appeared in 33 different video game platforms and consoles, including Windows, iOS, Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn, Nintendo, uh, SNES, N64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Turbo Duo, 3DO, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Uh, Sony and Nintendo entered into development partnership to create a new console, the video game machine that would be one of the first to play CDs. Uh, Sony would play the electronic CD player in other parts, but Nintendo killed the project. Sony decided to continue to develop the technology uh, and launch it as a game system known to the world as the original PlayStation. Uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System's Power Pad, which was released in 1988, along with the world, uh, the game World Class Track Meet, launched uh, an extra game genre. A decade later, in 1998, Konami's Dance Dance Revolution became the most successful uh, extra game ever. Resident Evil. One of the most successful video game franchises in history has spawned dozens of sequels, movies, toys, books, and video games. The original Resident Evil PlayStation game holds the record for most video game dialogue, according to the Guinness World Records Gamers Edition. Video game designer 
uh, Shiguri Mayamoto gave Mario his iconic mustache so people could uh, see his nose. But because of graphic capabilities, Mayamoto made other design shortcuts too, giving the plumber a hat because his hair was too hard to draw and animate, uh, not giving and having him wear overalls so par- uh, players could see his arms move. Made him iconic. And finally, Street Fighter 2 uh, introduced one video gaming's first uh, playable female characters, Chin Li, the first playable video game character in 1985, Tetio, arcade game Typhoon Galley, and just like that, you're 19 video game bugs smarter. You're welcome. Um, and moving on to our next story. A comedian says that he legally changed his name to Hugo Boss in defiance of the luxury German designer who's targeting small businesses and charities who use the name Boss. Joe uh, Lysette posted a letter on Twitter uh, with the UK Deed Polls Office letterhead, which uh, commits him to absolutely and entirely renounce and relinquish and abandon the use of my said former name. Um, the 31-year-old said that he'd be launching a brand new product as Hugo Boss with all details to be revealed on a new series of his consumer show, Got Your Back, on Channel 4. Uh, Lychat, who's appeared on, um, on Nevermind the Buzzcocks and Live at the Apollo, said the small Brewery in Swansea has uh, had to spend thousands of pounds on legal fees and rebranding. Um, he tweeted, so Hugo Boss, who tur- whose turnover is approximately 2.7 billion a year, have a cease and desist letter on a number of small businesses and charities who use the word boss or similar. Boss Brewing, according to the Wales Online, was left with $10,000 in legal fees af- last year after the fashion brand sent a cease and desist letter when the brewer tried to register its brand. And in 2018, a charity called Dark Girl Boss received a legal letter from Hugo Boss when it tried to trademark its name, according to the paper. Uh, Hugo Boss, often known as Boss, was founded in 1924 and employs uh, more than 14,000 people in 127 countries with sales and more than $2.3 billion from 2018 uh, in its 439 stories, the company famously produced the SS uniforms for the Nazis during the Second World War, using forced laborers with its um, um, with its uh, founder being a longtime Nazi Party member and supporter of Adolf Hitler. In 2011, Boss sent a statement apologizing for the harm and hardship at the factory run at the time. Lychad, whose new name was trending on Twitter on Sunday, also tweeted. Hugo Boss did not historically manufacture uniforms for the Nazis. Sorry, this Hugo Boss did not historically manufacture uniforms for the Nazis. Hugo Boss told Sky News it welcomed the comedian, formerly known as Joe uh, Joe Lychett, as a member of the Hugo Boss family. In his statement, he said it was an open-minded company um, and does not... Oppose the free use of language. In any way, we accept the generic term boss and its various and frequent uses in different languages. Uh, it said that uh, it worked with Boss Brewing to find a solution okay, that allowed the smaller company to continue using its name and, uh, and products, apart from the name of two beers that it had to change slightly. Um, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, I don't think anybody would have confused this brewing company with Hugo Boss. I really don't. I don't think anybody would be that, uh, you know, you know, I think Hugo Boss needs to cool his jets and get over itself. Uh, sorry, not the comedian, the company. Uh, but I kind of love, kind of love that sassiness. When we come back, some, uh, black market stuff.
because of coronavirus. Uh, so stay tuned for that when we come back from the break. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back. When we left off, we were talking about a comedian sticking it to the company Hugo Boss. And uh, now that we've returned, we're going to talk coronavirus because it is the top of every news story and we just need to get over it. Everyone's going to talk about it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, So uh, coronavirus uh, panic buying has created a black market for toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Uh, The two things... You need most in um, in the event of apocalypse. In Australia, after explicitly stating that there's no need to hoard supplies like toilet paper, following the announcement that Australia has labeled coronavirus as a global pandemic, uh, they've all gone and gone panic buying in Coles and Woolworths. Uh... Due to growing and misplaced fears over the coronavirus outbreak becoming worse, Australian shoppers have gone and panic bought um, and hoarded up all the toilet paper and hand sanitizer that they could find. Fascinating uh, little mixy mixy there. Members of the GOAT team have, uh, have checked out a number of supermarkets through Sydney and can confirm that Australian Australia is currently in the midst of a toilet paper and hand sanitizer panic buying wait. Um, and there are empty shelves on, for those supplies everywhere. Uh, so there are lots of tweets showing pictures of the cleaned out toilet paper, paracetamol, and oats sections, uh, as well as hand sanitizer, paracetamol being uh, sort of like our Advil. You know, like it's like a little painkiller. Oats being uh, oats. So, uh, the coronavirus panic buying spree with the resulting shortage of toilet paper and other supplies uh, and what we've inadvertently created as a black market for them online. Um, All you need to do is just search hand sanitizer on eBay and you'll find bottles of, uh, of, of hand sanitizer on sale for cr- crazy inflated prices in toilet paper. Uh, still being kind of reasonably priced for now. We get that the coronavirus outbreak is a serious and scary issue, but, um, but the panic buying of toilet paper and hand sanitizer is, is kind of a massive overreaction. Yeah. Okay, the disease is awful and people are suffering, but um, we're, we don't need to prepare the apocalypse bunker just yet. Um, leading health experts via the ABC are warning everyone in Australia that there is no need to panic buy toilet paper and other supplies. There's still plenty of time to prepare for any potential coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the recommended thing to do is to simply buy a few more supplies on top of your usual shopping list just in case, uh, instead of stripping supermarket shelves completely bare. So if you're worrying over not stocking up on toilet paper and hand sanitizer in your local Kohl's and Woolworths amidst worries over the coronavirus outbreak, uh, stress less because everyone in Australia is overreacting. For those who have hoarded supplies, um, maybe maybe spare some in the black market. Yeah, make a buck. Or give them to your friends. You know, be kind. Be kind to them. 
these uh, these panic buys they've been um, they have been a little bit crazy. Um, panic buys are are historically um, historically the case. Uh, I mean, due to well, due to obviously. You know, um, <clears throat> our our history of um, having to do that, right? Because of various disasters like the Great Depression, things like that. Uh, you know, is it reasonable? Is it reasonable? Uh, this article says that it that it is. Uh, Humans can perceive some future threats and prepare for them. In the case of something like coronavirus, one important factor is the speed at which information will be shared across the world. Stocking up on food and other supplies helps people feel like they have some level of control over these events. It's a logical thought process. If the virus comes into your area, you want to be able to reduce your contact with others uh, and ensure that you can survive from a withdrawal period. The greater the perceived threat, the stronger the reaction will be. At this stage, um, the virus has an incubation period of 14 days, and people need to be prepared for 14 days of isolation. Being prepared for the isolation uh, is a result of an extreme or irrational fear, is not an exalt, sorry, uh, but rather an expression of ingrained survival mechanisms. Historically, we've had to protect ourselves from things like harsh winters, failing crops, or infectious disease. Uh, without the aid of, of, of modern social institutions and technology. So they say that stocking up on supplies is actually a valid response. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's behavioral, you know. Uh, a lot of uncertainty surrounds disasters, which means that it, advanced decisions are made on the basis of perceived threats, uh, not the actual disaster itself. Because of this uncertainty, people tend to overreact or generally uh, risk-adverse and aim to prepare for the worst-case scenario rather than the best. And when it comes to stocking up or hoarding large private collections of goods, uh, we don't know how much we're going to need because we don't know how long said event will last. Um, the importance of emotions okay, may seem like an irrational emotional response, but emotional emotions are not irrational. They help us uh, decide how to focus our attention. So... You know, don't don't call people uh, irrational for being emotional. Well, um, emotions allow individuals to attend to issues longer, to care about things harder, and to show more resilience. They're instinctual human elements of human behavior. Um, and uh, and changes to individual behaviors can have a large scale implication for. Her. Example, a supermarket will normally organize its supply chain and stocks on the basis of average levels of consumption. These systems do not handle big fluctuations in demand, uh, demand very well. So when de demand surges in parts of China, Italy, and elsewhere, the result is empty shelves. Uh, do we need to be stocking up? No, not particularly. You don't need to rush out and buy a bunch of baked beans and such. But um, if you... Uh, if you think that you might be uh, susceptible to this, if you're going to be traveling to China in the next uh, little while, you know maybe maybe you should start thinking about grabbing some toilet paper and hand sanitizer yourself. Um, panic buying, maybe not as irrational as we've been uh, making fun of people for. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. So um, that's it for the coronavirus scare. It's fear-mongering and such. When we come back, um, a, a strange funeral. Um, a very strange funeral at a, uh, at a, pen, at a, at a college campus. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we return from the break. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back. When we left off, we were talking about panic buying in light of the coronavirus. And now, uh, State College, Pennsylvania. Scores of people sang songs and lit candles at a vigil for a closed Taco Bell restaurant in Penn State, Pennsylvania, on March 1st with the events. Uh, the event organizers saying of the restaurant, Taco Bell can never be replaced. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, this is one of the stranger funerals I've ever heard about. Uh, but don't worry, let's hear of some more. So here are 15 of the strangest funeral customs from around the world. That's my breaking news sound. I hope it worked for you. Uh, most of us know about two kind of ways of saying goodbye to the dead, cremations uh, and burials, cremations often being put into mausoleums, although you can bury cremated ashes. Dig a little deeper, though, ha, and you'll be surprised to know about some of the strange, creative, and uh, straight up bizarre funerals that different cultures from around the world practice, uh, from uh, offering bodies to vultures to beating a corpse to a pulp. Talk about kicking someone when they're down. Some crazy ways to dispose of the dead. So here are some weird rituals from around the world. Uh, burial beads. Not to be confused with Mardi Gras beads. Uh, turn the dead into colorful beads. Many people in South Korea opt to compress the remains of the dead into gem-like beads in different colors which are then displayed at home. I guess you could wear them around your neck, but uh, don't. That's weird. Uh, Endo-cannibalism, eating the dead. You know, waste not. In the old days, the Malaysians of Papua New Guinea and the Wari people of Brazil would eat the dead in order to expel the fear and mystery that surrounds the concept of death. The Yunomi people also practice this. And there you go. Uh, become a memorial reef in the ocean. Yeah. There you go. Like naming a star after you, but in the ocean. A company in the U.S. called Eternal Reefs. <laughs> it's really funny. Compresses remains into a sphere or reef ball that's attached to a reef in the ocean, providing a habitat for sea life. Probably leads to some curious fish. Uh, turning off the bones, once every seven years, the Malagasy people of Madagascar exhume the bodies of loved ones, wrap them in cloth, and dance with the corpse sacks. Probably smells pretty bad, uh, so they spray it with nothing other than wine. Tell stories of their families. In Ghana... People like to be buried in something that represents their lives. These include coffins shaped like planes for pilots, fish for fishermen, and a Mercedes for a businessman. Especially uh, Buddhists sometimes cut up the body into pieces and leave them on a hill for the birds to feast on. 
Buddhists see uh, dead bodies as empty vessels and consider these sky burials an act of charity and compassion. Among the Dani people, the death of a loved one meant that any women and children related to uh, the deceased had to cut off some of their fingers. This was done to drive away the spirits and is now banned. With a big horn band culture at the heart of New Zealand, or New Orleans, not New Zealand, that would be weird. Uh, it's not a surprise that they play music, even in death, a funeral procession that's led by a big horn band, which plays sad tunes at first, followed by an upbeat jazz and blues number, accompanied by furious dancing. Uh, the Benguit of uh, northwestern Philippines blindfold their dead and place them next to the main entrance of the house. Forgive me, but look, shouldn't you be blindfolding the living when there's a dead person coming in, right? That's like in the entrance. That's, I think, what I would lean towards, probably, right? That's, no? Okay. I mean, I just, yeah, it's fine. Do you think? Uh, the Tenguyan people of the Philippines dress the body in the best clothes, sit them on a chair, and place a lit cigarette in their lips. Because, you know, they're gone anyway, so smoking won't um, hurt them. Uh, the Cavitino near Melania bury their dead in a hollowed-out tree trunk, like Sleepy Hollow. Tree is selected a while before the person's death, so you can pick out your own tree. Uh, the Apeo, who live in the North Philippines, bury their dead under the kitchen. Mm, you know, so they can still enjoy the food. Uh, environmental friendly burial. In this method, you skip the embalming process and get biodegradable woven willow caskets, which decompose into the ground so you could become a tree. That is exactly what Mufasa was talking about in the great circle of life, I'm pretty sure. Um, in this method, you skip the embalming process and get biodegradable. Oh, no, I already did that. Sorry. Um, the corpse... Okay, here's, here's one. Uh, Zoroastrian vulture funeral. Uh, the corpse is washed with, a, uh, with bull urine, urine after it's visited by a holy dog, uh, then placed atop a tower of silence where it's swiftly devoured by vultures, these vultures uh, are getting pretty well fed by many dead bodies. The Haida people of North America have a special ritual for the death of a chief or shaman. Body would be crushed into a pulp with clubs and put into a suitcase box, and the box is then placed on a mortuary totem pole in front of the deceased person's house. Um crazy stuff. Love it. Fascinating funerals from around the world. Very exciting. Culture is cool. Um, culture is cool. Uh, it still doesn't make the Taco Bell funeral any more justifiable. I'm still not sold on the Taco Bell funeral personally, but I don't know, maybe you're different than I. Um, I, I, I don't think that Taco Bell deserves a funeral. Hot take. Hot take. Say what you will about me. Not into a talk about funeral. Okay? All right. Just want you to know that. Uh, what, how would you want to be buried? I want to know. I want you guys to write in. I want you guys to comment. All right? I want to know. I want to know how you feel about it. I want to know who's got the best funeral ideas. You know, I want to, I want to hear. I want to hear all about it, people. So tell me. Tell me about your funeral plans. Uh, when we come back from the break, uh, as you can guess, guys, we're going to have some more crazy, weird stories for you. So don't go anywhere, okay? Because there's a lot coming back for you when we return from the break. So don't go anywhere. Okay? Stay tuned. Listen up.
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. Uh, before the break, we were talking about some uh, weird funerals. Weird, weird funerals. Uh, and uh, now that we're back here, um, I want to talk to you about uh, a weird thing that happened um, that uh, I'm not sure I'm ready for. Nuclear ice cream is, uh, is not how this Ontario dessert maker wants to be known, but it's how they're going to be known regardless. Ontario ice cream maker Chapman says the proposal to bury the nation's stockpile spent nuclear fuel in the province's agricultural heartland does not do the dairy industry any favors, I'll say. Chapman's manufacturers frozen desserts in Markdale, Ontario, a community northwest of Teeswater, a dairy processing hub and one of two potential sites in Ontario could pay a host uh, to proposed uh, deep Geological Respiratory, a uh, $23 billion high-tech nuclear waste dump uh, that would store nearly 3 million bundles of spent nuclear fuel about a half kilometer below the earth. The proposal has divided communities in Bruce County, sparking disagreement in town halls, arenas, coffee shops, and diner tables across the region. Uh, Ashley Chapman, vice president of Chapman's Ice Cream, said that he's worried that if he if the proposal eventually goes through, there could be potential stigma associated with dairy products and processed in the Bruce County area. Having nuclear waste dumps smack dab in the middle of where I get my dairy product for uh, doesn't actually fill me with joy, he said. To think that we could have a nuclear waste dump in such a strategically important processing area for dairy is just silly. What makes Bruce County an important dairy processing area is the faculty owned by Galia Foods Cooperative in the town of Teeswater, which supplies Chapman's with much of the dairy milk used in frozen dessert products it's manufactured in Markdale. Company spokeswoman for Galia Foods uh, said the cooperative has no official position on whether it proposed a deep geological respiratory should go ahead. The Nuclear Waste Management Organization, the federal agency in charge of a building, uh, said the DGR is designed to safely contain isolation radioactive waste over a period of thousands of years through a series of layered engineered and natural borders, including the Earth's bedrock. I'm sure it'll be safe, Chapman said, but it's really the average consumer that uh, likes me, that, that, I, I, that I worry about. Public perception is everything, and I can't criticize the public with associating bad things with nuclear and milk in this instance. Chapman argues recent changes, such as uh, changing consumer tastes and changing food guides, have put pressure on the industry. To not be nuclear, it doesn't feel like it's that pressuring. You know, just don't put um, deadly chemicals in your ice cream. I don't know, but that's just, maybe it's a crazy notion. I don't know. Uh, since 1979, the average consumption of milk in Canada shrank from its high water mark of 98 liters per person to 64 by 2015, according to Stats Canada. Ice cream habits also retreated over the same period from an average of 2.7 liters per person to 4.4 liter or 12.7, sorry, to 4.4 liters. It may not be a surprise that the number of Ontario dairy farmers dwindles from uh, over 5,000 to just over 3,000, according to Stats Canada. I think it's a very short-sighted plan, he said. We all own the responsibility for this. Short-sighted is not how Bruce County dairy farmer Mark Ireland sees the DGR product. He 
His family runs Albden Farms, about three kilometers south of Teeswater. We all own the responsibility for this. He says, if you turned on the lights this morning in the coffee maker, uh, you're responsible for future generations. Arlen says he's lived in the area all his life for the past 60 years, spent nuclear fuel, has been stored above the ground near the Bruce Nuclear Power Generation Station without incident. Never heard anybody say, you know, I don't feel safe with this nuclear thing just down the road. I'm going to move to Saskatchewan where they produce their electricity by burning coal. It's a good point. Uh, the Ontario Ministry of Labor regulates, monitors, uh, air, surface, water, precipitation, milk, produce, produce, sorry, and meat in the Bruce, Pickering, and Darlington areas for radionuclides. Ongoing studies have found only minuscule amounts and levels far below the prescribed by the World Health Organization. Uh, I don't know about you guys, I'm a little bit nervous of any nuclear stuff being in, in my food. But hey, if the World Organization says it's okay, I guess we can all grow a third head and just, it's fine, right? I think that's how it's going to work. Um... It's an indication, he said, of the thoroughness uh, in the nuclear industry. This is this is Ireland again. I don't uh, I don't see any particular danger in putting it somewhere else. Uh, that it's certainly more protected if it's encased in a rock. Is the rock the Earth? Is that what they mean? Because I don't know if you saw Chernobyl, but that was encased in a rock. Didn't end well for them. The NWMO has been holding monthly meetings for a number of years to explain the scope and the uh, the technology behind the project and the people in the area. But the proposed waste facility has rankled environmental groups who are unsettled over the potential, the potential, the potential, the potential contamination from farmland and Lake Huron drinking water. And uh, ice cream. There you go. Researchers are currently, current, currently, oh my goodness, talking is very hard for some people. Okay? So, just bear with me. Researchers are currently probing the limestone beneath the area to determine stability and suitability for long-time storage in South Bruce. The, w, uh, the NWMO's other prospective location for the DGR is the town of Ignance, about three hours northwest of Thunder Bay. Uh, so, you know, always possible that this thing is going to be solved. These are some crazy things. This is some crazy stuff. This is some weird news. The idea of um, of drinking nuclear waste like we are. We are in the future now, guys. We are in the crux of it. That is as as future end of the worldy as I can imagine. This is crazy, crazy stuff. Um, that's uh, one of the weirder things I've I've ever reported on. So you know, um, thanks for being with me through this weird time, through this weird situation. Nuclear waste, nuclear contamination, and ice cream. Who? would have thought, you know, um, yeah, crazy stuff, so, uh, yeah, as, as per, as you can imagine, we are going to be, when we come back from the break, see if you can guess, it's thrilling, it's exciting, we're gonna be doing some of my fave shower thoughts. I love a shower thought. You love a shower thought. We all love a shower thought. I had several this morning. So um, maybe I'll sneak some of those in. We'll see. We'll see how we, how we go, how much time we have left towards the end there. Thanks for bearing with. And we will talk shower thoughts when we return from these messages.
The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. When we left off, we were talking about uh, nuclear ice cream cost, right? Anyway, shower thoughts. Um, gonna go to Reddit. The best shower thoughts. One armed people are probably so much better at spooning than the rest of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Nice. Uh, Bees die after having sex. Next time you see a bee, remember he's a virgin. (laughs) Funny. Samwise missed a perfect opportunity to make Frodo the ring bearer at his wedding. Yeah, he did. In Avatar. Jake Sully was promised he'd get a surgery uh, to walk in again uh, after he completed his mission. His society could grow functioning tissue and controlled nerve endings wirelessly well enough to create an avatar. Veteran Affairs was terrible 134 years into the future. Toilet thought. You know you've been on it for too long when you pee twice. (laughs) Yeah, get off your phone. If you ever find yourself naked in public, you probably want to cover up your face instead of your privates. No, no, I'd probably cover up the privates. The Matrix and the Terminator series could theoretically be related in a world where the Skynet wins because it becomes... Um, the robot overlords in the Matrix. That one I'm having trouble with. People like to deny science because it's too difficult for them to understand. I don't understand that. Ooh, this is fun. People born on 10-10-10 will turn 10 this year. They won't even appreciate that. Dogs probably don't mind coronavirus quarantine because they get to spend all day with their owners. Oh, Oh, that's so sweet. YOLO is a warning not to do anything stupid. True. You could totally take it that way. And I think you should, in fact. Um, you can create an account today and have cake day once every four years. Yeah, what... People that have birthdays on a leap... It's a leap year, by the way. It's the 29th while I'm recording this. If you have a leap year birthday, I want to hear from you. What do you do to celebrate? Do you celebrate on the 28th or the 1st? Are you... Are you like 4 or are you 20? What's going on? Wait. 16. It's early. Um, when you're laughing at something and someone tells you it's funny... It's not funny. Sorry, it makes it ten times funnier. It's true. Can't face backwards. Standing on a staircase. Whoa. You're either going up or down. Um, Yeah, so because it's a leap year, there are some 72-year-olds turning 18 today. Yeah, baby. Take that. Take that. You don't actually bite down on anything since you're bringing up your lower jaw. Yeah. Um, If you have to ask someone if they're okay... They probably haven't been for a while. Oh, sad. 
There needs to be a TV mashup of an undercover boss in 60 Days In, where CEOs live on the income of their lowest paid full-time employee. Ha, I love that. Dreams could be an alternative... Dreams could be alternative universes bleeding into ours through time and space. I've always thought that. I've always wondered that, not not thought that. Closest thing to uh, piloting the Millennium Falcon, Falcon is to drive the interstate while it's heavily snowing. Big time. A hundred years ago, seeing a child play Beethoven was an experience you'd remember for the rest of your life. Whereas nowadays... You'd only watch it for about 10 seconds. God, our society's gotten sad, hasn't it? If the world would have had the same reaction to the dangers of cigarette smoking as heart disease um, as they do to coronavirus, we'd probably save a lot more lives. Yeah, that's true. You don't need to panic about everything, guys. But, you know, everything is... um, just as important. With Wolverine's crazy fast healing ability, he could feed an entire village of cannibals for the rest of their lives. Yeah, just take a little bite. There are probably millions of epic stories that were never written because the author gave up before finishing them. Oh. Yeah. Insulting people by saying they have a small dick is an insult to good people with small dicks. A lot of bad people with big ones, you know. Dogs probably feel extremely popular at parties uh, with a lot of introverts. Oh, so true. It's only a matter of time before somebody uh, hates on Guinness World Records for having different male and female records. The most irritating thing heard by people born on the 28th of February must be, you're lucky you weren't born one day later. Uh, My roommate was born on the 28th. I should ask her that. Water tastes so much better in the middle of the night. Yeah, baby. It does. Insults are a psychological spell that only works on soft-hearted people. (laughs) Yeah, nerds. Works on me. It works on me. Whoa. One day we'll search up the Mandela effect and search results will show no results. Oh, I hate that. Backwards of Surrey is Iris. Maybe she's part of an eye who's watching the other's privacy. Scary stuff. You can taste your skeleton anytime if you lick your teeth. Gross. Sneezing is supposed to clear out your nostrils. But all that gets cleared is your mouth. True. People think the world is ending now, but imagine what people were thinking when they were born into... uh, Living through both world wars. True. <laughs> People born today, February 29th, will mostly, most likely never live old enough to smoke. Technically, yeah. Bagged potato chips are one product that no one cares If delivered with broken pieces inside. Yeah. I mean, we do care. But, you know, we find we can't complain. All right, so that's it for for these, I think. Um, Yeah, I think that's it for our our shower thoughts this week. So please, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'd like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show, write a nice review, and rate the episode. That helps us. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much, and have yourselves a great night.